everyone, welcome back to DBX Labs. Today we're going to be looking at a Marx generator and we're going to make one. So a Marx generator basically composes of a multi-stage uh, circuit which has an input of either lower high voltage DC an output of much higher voltage DC depending on how many stages there are and uh, unlike other um, step up circuits it, uh, its other input is ground it doesn't have to be AC it doesn't have to have an automatic switch um, that switches the um, the polarity of the circuit uh, and that's kind of unique and it's very useful actually because um, when you're working with high voltage DC and you want to make it even higher, this is really the best way to do it. And it's been used in many circumstances throughout history since its uh, discovery, well, uh, since its um, first acknowledgement uh, in 1922, either 22 or 24, by um, a guy by the name of Erwin Otto Marx. So it's not Karl Marx we're talking about, but he basically uh, thought of this and in the way it gets around um, switching through um, a AC or digital switch system is it uses spark gaps. Uh, so the way the circuit would go is if you have the high voltage DC input and it's on, it's going to slowly charge up all of these capacitors in the circuit and they all charge up at relatively the same rate through these resistors. And once they all reach the same, well, they're all about at the same voltage. Uh, once they reach the voltage that will break down the air gap in the first spark gap, they will all fire because as soon as this spark gap breaks down, this voltage goes through here, combines with this voltage, goes through here, combines with that voltage, and so on until you have the cumulative four voltages added on to the input DC voltage, and that's your output. So it's five, t well, yeah, it's five times the input voltage. And uh, it only really works if you have high voltage input because otherwise you're not gonna have a spark uh, to power that spark gap. But then you can take the output, feed it into ground, uh, and have an even larger spark gap. So that's where we're gonna be building today. I'm going to be building it using my homemade capacitors that I make from polyethylene sheeting and aluminum foil. If you guys want me to make a video on that in the future, I can make that. I already have some footage for it, so I can just throw that together a uh, real short vid. But um, there, there are a few of those already out on YouTube, but uh, that, I don't know. If anyone wants that, I'll make that. So the U.S. government and the Soviets have used these in the past to test uh, aircraft and all sorts of devices against EMP uh, because when a Marx generator has its final output make that massive spark, um, it typically is pretty loud and it's pretty powerful and that electromagnetic pulse is enough to influence surrounding objects that are susceptible to EMPs. So that's why they tested them. They built massive, massive ones on towers, many stories tall. And you can look up pictures of those. There's still like desolate ones in Russia as we speak. But I had built this Marx generator, what, a, a year ago? And um, it was pretty sketchy. Uh, because it's, I mean, as you can see, it, the spark gap was just made out of this copper wire just forced over there, and it was all wrapped in duct tape. It really wasn't the best setup. It did its job. I, um, the channel profile is a picture of the output of this, um, and hopefully we can get some better pictures of those today. Uh, by making a new one and trying that one out, seeing what kind of voltages we can pump out of that. To add another unit to the circuit, we just place another capacitor of the same uh, capacitance and um, uh, maximum voltage uh, in line with the others. Now we hammer in two nails 
in between the two capacitors and uh, make sure that the spark gap between them is uh, as small as possible that you can get while there's still a air gap. We now solder two wires, the one on the left connecting from the left, uh, well, from the previous capacitor on the left side to the uh, left side of the spark gap, the one on the right connecting from the right side of the spark gap to the new capacitor that we just placed in. Now I place two one mega ohm resistors on either side of the capacitors connecting the capacitors um, and uh, I'm using one half watt one mega ohm resistors if they work for me with two microwave oven transformers they should work for anyone so um, you don't need anything bulkier than this let's see how this Marx generator works running off of two microwave oven transformers now before we get started testing out the Marx generator, let me just show you guys the high voltage power supply that I'll be working with. So right here I have uh, the primary circuit to my Tesla coil, um, which no is not complete. Once it's complete I'll make a video on it, but um, um, here's, the, here's the secondary coil. I hand wound that. So... That should be pretty nice once it's done. There's the Toleroid as well. And um, uh, so this is the, the primary circuit. Um, it's a voltage doubler circuit in the mix. Here we have two microwave oven trans, uh, well, capacitors and the two transformers, of course. Uh, right now, I'm, I've just hooked up the transformers directly to the circuit we'll be working with, along with two microwave oven diodes. Um, rated for approximately 2,000 volts each. Um, so in total, this should prevent, um, well, it should turn the 4,000 volt AC coming off of the two micro oven transformers in series and turn that into 4,000 volts DC for our use. When the high voltage charge is placed on a sheet of plastic, it quickly spreads out across the surface of it, almost acting as a sort of dielectric. This allows massive charges to build up, which, given the chance to, will quickly arc all at once back to ground. In this case, I'm running the Marx generator at 11 stages, and two pieces of page protector sheets are used as the dielectric. With this high of voltage, anything less than two sheets will quickly be broken down and arced through. Here I have a one gallon jug full of salt water. There's a nail in the top that's connected to the uh, salty water, which is conductive. And this is basically like a Leyden jar without the outer, um, the outer layer of foil. Well, there's multiple types of Leyden jars, but, um, does the same thing as the Leyden jar because when we turn on the high voltage, the high voltage output from the Marx generator, we can see that we've spread a charge across the surface.
it'd be very bad to touch the side and then touch the top of the jug right now. Not that I'm going to try that. Okay guys, that's all for this video. If you'd like me to make a follow-up video where I expand onto this Marks generator, make it larger, hopefully produce a higher voltage from it, um, just put that in the comments. I'll probably get to it sometime soon, but uh, as for right now, I'm working on a few things. The BIS diodes with tetrazoleal hydrazine. Um, I bought some hydrazine chloride in the mail and um, because of corona, it's kind of hard to get my hands on that right now. So don't know when that video will come out. I'm also making a few other projects that I'm taking footage of. And I can upload those as I finish them. If you guys want me to make more videos in the future regarding electronics, um, I'll be sure to do that. Uh, I know that right now the viewer base is mostly just people inter interested in energetics, but... Maybe I can expand the channel a little bit more if I move into electronics because, I mean, clearly I I have a, a large amount of electronics uh, in the realm of high voltage that I can put on this channel. So, um, see you guys next time.